All right, everyone, we are back. Great to be with you here today, as always. I'm Dr. Stephen Cabral, board certified doctor of naturopathy. Uh, really looking forward to going over this topic today, near and dear to my heart. You know, someone that dealt with adrenal issues many, many years ago, we're going to explain how it actually affects your thyroid and your metabolism. So if you've been gaining weight or you find it difficult to lose weight and take that weight off, uh, if you have brain fog, especially in the morning, lower mood, sluggish, not a lot of drive, not a lot of ambition, uh, lower libido, and again, like I said, just kind of all, all, all the lows, this is something you're going to want to pay attention to because this is not autoimmune thyroid issues like Hashimoto's. This is actually low thyroid. So if your TSH has been creeping above a two, that is not optimal. A lot of doctors will say, oh, it's okay to three, it's okay to four, not until it goes above a five is it a problem. It's a problem. Anything above a 2.0 is an issue, anything below a 0.5 is also an issue. You wanna stay between 0.5 and two for your thyroid stimulating hormone, that's your TSH. All right, let's take a look at this right now. So I, didn't, I usually uh, bring up a lab for you on these particular whiteboard series. I, don't have a, I didn't bring up the lab for you today because I want to share with you how the uh, adrenals affect the thyroid. But to get the lab that we use in our practice, again, it's open source. We ship this anywhere in the world. You can do it right at home. Uh, you can find that at equi.life forward slash labs. That's E-Q-U-I dot L-I-F-E forward slash labs. I'll post it below. And then I'm also going to post my all my free podcasts just on the thyroid. So if you really want to figure out how to fix your thyroid, trust me, we can help you with that. There's no doubt about it. Remember, there's always a reason why. There's always an underlying root cause. So let's take a look at this. This is your adrenals over here, and here's your thyroid over here. So all of this takes place with what's called the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal uh, thyroid uh, loop. So your hypothalamus is right up here inside of your brain, okay? And then it tells your pituitary gland inside of your brain to send signals to your thyroid right here. That's this butterfly gland right here in the neck, okay? And your adrenals, which are behind your kidneys, or they're actually on top of your kidneys. And what happens is when our body produces stress hormone, that's the adrenals, okay? So think of the thyroid as more of the metabolism and think of the adrenals as more of the energy and stress hormones, okay? So let's go through this. So your hypothalamus in your brain, uh, let's draw a little brain here, okay? It sends signals to your pituitary gland, which is also in your brain, to send signals to your adrenals, all right? That's really all that's happening. I can tell you about corticotropin releasing hormone and adrenal corticotropin hormone, but those are just fancy words. You don't need to know any of that, all right? So those are the signals that they send. But at the end of the day, you probably heard about adrenaline before, and you probably heard about norepinephrine maybe. Well, when your body starts to produce those uh, chemicals, which are actually nor neurotransmitters, you can see that they start to inhibit your pituitary gland from creating and producing thyroid stimulating hormone. So we've got a block right here at TSH. And then when we start to produce stress hormones, which are called glucocorticoids, okay, that's called cortisol. So you might not have heard about glucocorticoids, but you probably heard about cortisol. Cortisol's job is to essentially manufacture some type of glucose in the body. It can break it, well, it can use the glucose that's in your bloodstream from food. It could break it down from liver glycogen, muscle glycogen, et cetera. So what its job is to do is to get you ready for fight or flight. The problem is when you start to produce cortisol, especially at chronic levels, you actually block T4, okay, which is right, so the thyroid's making T4, and it's preventing it from creating activated T3. Now, activated T3 happens in many of the different cells and organs in the body, the main one being the liver. So it actually blocks T4 from becoming active T3. Why does that matter? Well, you can produce enough T4, but T4 doesn't give you a lot of that get up and go. It doesn't give you that metabolic boost to help with calorie burning, to help with circulation, heat within the body, and so much more. So you start to suffer from the brain fog, the low mood, the low libido, the low energy, right? Because you're not making enough T3, which is about 70% of the thyroid hormone in your body. Really important. But high levels of cortisol also do, does one other thing. And that actually is change or stop T3 from becoming usable. And it's something called reverse T3. Reverse T3 inhibits usable active T3, 
which is like not getting any T3 at all. So you're basically, it's on its route and it can go from T4 to T3 and it shifts over to reverse T3 and now you're not able actually to use it. So what happens is high levels of stress actually begin to block thyroid hormone production. Now, why would it do that? Well, it's very simple. When your body's under higher levels of stress, you tell your body to get into more of the fight or flight or sympathetic nervous system. When that happens, your body says, okay, we're in more of a survival-based situation. We're going to start to do what? Lower metabolic rate, lower the amount of calories we need, conserve energy, slow down circulation. You can see how all these things are actually protective, but the body doesn't know that there's not a real stress. We're not necessarily under a great famine or drought or war ourselves, like whatever the fighting might be. We're actually just stressed from everyday life. That's why in order to fix the thyroid, typically what you need to do is address the adrenals, the HPA access and stress in general. So I can't go through all of how to do that today. I'll certainly do more videos, but of course you can find out how your adrenals are affecting your thyroid with the stress hormones moon and metabolism test over at equi.life forward slash labs. And also inside of um, at stephencabral.com forward slash accelerators, you can actually find my entire accelerator that teaches you all the different steps that you need to do to rebalance your thyroid metabolism, mood, energy, circulation, all those great things. So hopefully this was helpful. And of course, if it was, please feel free to pass it along to anybody else that you think it would help. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to receive more of these videos. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. And of course, happy to answer those questions as well in the comments. Take care.